وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد In today's episode, inshallah ta'ala, I want to go into sulbul mawdu, the topic at hand. Inshallah ta'ala, the first type of al-ghulu, extremism. And remember what I said in the introduction, that the ghulu, extremism, is two types. There is extreme in exaggeration and there is extreme in negligence. So whenever I use the word ghulu or extreme, I'm referring to whether it's in exaggeration or in negligence. Both of them are extreme, as I mentioned, from the statements of the, uh, from the Quran, from the Sunnah, and from the Prophet Sallallahu statements, and also the early A'imma of Islam, like Imam al awzai and others, what they said regarding um, al ghulu So I'm going to break the parties or the people into two. I'm going to always mention the first people who fell extreme in exaggeration and then I'm going to mention the people who have fallen into extreme negligence. In every topic there's going to be two parties and from there what becomes clear to you is the path of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The path of the Salafiyun that is in the middle. We're not ifrat or tafrid. We're not extreme in exaggeration or extreme in negligence. We have a middle path that we always stick to. May Allah make us from the people of uh, Ahlul Sunnah. May Allah make us from the Salafiyun. May Allah make us from Ahlul Athar. Innahu waliyu thalika wal qadiru alayhi. The first ghulu is al ghulu fil mashayikh. Extremism in scholars. So I'm going to start with extreme in exaggeration and then I'm going to go to extreme in negligence. al ghulu the first party, how do they fall into extreme regarding extreme exaggeration regarding the scholars? How do they do it? How do they fall extreme in the scholars? Two ways. Number one, they glorify, they venerate particular shuyukh, particular, and the rest they ignore them. Even though they say to you, the scholars have said, the scholars have said, they're referring to a group of them. They've picked those group. And they venerate that group. They venerate that, those particular ones. And they place love and allegiance, association and disassociation based on those particular shuyukh that they've picked, those particular scholars that they've handpicked. Those are the ones that their love and their hate for you is based on. So when they say to the ulama, they don't mean the body of scholars around the world that you know, wherever they may be, uh, in India, in Africa, in the Arabian Peninsula, يعني, in Asia, wherever it may be, they do not refer to that. They're referring to a hand-picked scholars. They're referring to them. And their love and their hate is based on that. Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he refuted these type of people who have fallen into glorifying, venerating particular scholars and then basing love and hate on those particular scholars that they have, cho- they have chosen. Ibn Taymiyyah, he said, Rahimahullah, وَمَنْ نَصَبَ شَخْصًا Anyone who appoints a person, كَائِنًا مَنْ كَانَ Whoever that person may be, فَوَالَا وَعَادَ عَلَى مُوَافَقَتِهِ And he bases love and hate on that particular individual. He bases love and hate based on that particular scholar or those particular group of scholars. doesn't matter. Fawala, he bases love. Wa'ada, and he bases enmity. Ala muwafaqati, in agreeing with him. Fil qawli wal fi'l, in speech or actions. He says, your action or your speech is not in line with this shaykh. Fahuwa min alladheena farraqu deenahum wa kanu shi'a. These people are, they fall under the verse. مِنَ الَّذِينَ فَرَّقُوا دِينَهُمْ They're the ones who divided their religion. 
وكانوا شيعا and they became a sect, a group. Ibn Taymiyyah said this in his Majmu'u al-Fatawa, the 20th volume. He said it in page 8. This shows us basing love and hate on a particular scholar. What he said is the truth and everybody should go in line with him or everything he's done is the right. Everyone should be in line with him because he said it. Ibn Taymiyyah, and if you don't do it, we will dis- we'll boycott you, we will disconnect ourselves from you. Ibn Taymiyyah said, anyone who does that, he is from the person who has fallen into divided their religion and they have they are now a group, a sect. That's one quote of Ibn Taymiyyah. Second quote of Ibn Taymiyyah, refuting these ones who have fallen into extreme exaggeration. Ibn Taymiyyah he said, ahadin, it is not permissible for anybody. To appoint a person for the people. He appoints a person for the people. This Sheikh is Sheikh Al Mu'adham, the glorified Sheikh. He appoints this Sheikh for the people. يدعو إلى طريقته and he calls the people to the Sheikh's path, that particular Sheikh's path. ويوالي عليها ويعادي. He shows love and hate based on that Sheikh. Imagine his brothers. The person can be everything in Ahlul Sunnah. But if he chooses to go against that particular shaykh, sorry, all of the criticism, name calling will come his way. He can call to the way of the sahabas. He could love all of the other ulama and even love that shaykh, but disagree with him. He loves the shaykh, he honors him, he places him in the level Allah placed him, but he doesn't blindly follow that shaykh like they do. They will boycott you, they will show you enmity. They will disassociate themselves from you. And guess what? You are not in any way, shape, or form in Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Ibn Taymiyyah said that should not be done. Calling the people to a Shaykh's path, loving the people based on that Shaykh's path, or hating the people based on the path of the Shaykh. So, what are you loving the people based on and what are you hating them based on is not what the Prophet came with and not what the people united upon. So, it's not the Quran or the Sunnah and it's not the Ijma'ah. Ibn Taymiyyah said, غَيَّرَ النَّبِيِّ It's not the Prophet. يعني, I would show love and hate based on the Prophet. Yes, that's correct. And I will show love and hate based on ijma'. Unanimous agreement on a matter. If you don't follow this ijma', I will hate you for it. Yes, correct. Ibn Taymiyyah said, they don't. They base their love and their hate based upon their shaykh, his stance, his position regarding a particular person, for example. Ibn Taymiyyah said, anyone who does this, بَلْ هَذَا مِنْ فِعْلِ أَهْلِ الْبِدَعِي Ibn Taymiyyah said, the ones who love and hate based on their shaykh's way are the innovators. This is the actions of the innovators. The innovators, they appoint a person as a figure and they say to everybody, you have to follow this figure. Look at the tabliqis today, they're the same, they do that. Look at the other tawa'if and the other groups, you find that in them, it's common amongst them. That person they appointed, you have to love and hate based on him. Oh, kalam. Or they will base their love and hate on a statement they created. They made this statement up. And they show their love and hate, Ibn Taymiyyah said, based on a statement they made up and they come with. They divide the ummah based on that Shaykh's way or that statement that they've made up. And they show hate uh, based on it. That's the first group. Exaggeration on a particular shuyukhs that they have appointed, they go overboard on those shuyukhs. Whereas the other group of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, they venerate that Shaykh, they love him, they admire him. When he gets he, a statement in line with the Quran and the Sunnah, ala rasi wal ayn, we'll take it from him. We consider him to be from the people of knowledge that Allah has placed him there. But, at ta'assub wa taqlid al a'ma, they are not of that. They are not fanatic to particular individuals. And they are not blind followers. The second extremism that they fall into when it comes to the shuyukh is التنافس على الظفر بتسكية الشيوخ المعظمين والحرص على التماس رضاهم وشهاداتهم لهم بالسلفية. They, ra- they race and they run and they pound and jump to the shaykh Al-Mu'adham, the glorified Shaykh that they have appointed, that they venerated, that Shaykh, they hasten to him, all of them. They run to him, 
to get what? To get his acceptance and his pardoning and his testimony that they are Salafis. He gives out the Salafiyah to them. He says, you know what? I'm, I've pardoned you. I've forgiven you. You are forgiven. You, you are Salafi. You, you're not Salafi. He's the one they run to. They hasten, hasten to every opportunity they get. They fly to him and they sit with him and he appoints who's Salafi and who isn't. And they've forgotten that number one, the one that gives tazkiyah is Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah says in the Quran, أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يُزَكُّونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ بَلِ اللَّهُ يُزَكِّي مَنْ يَشَاءُ أَلَمْ تَرَ Do they not see? أَلَمْ تَرَ إِلَى الَّذِينَ يُزَكُّونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ Do you not see the ones who try to do tazkiyah to nafs, purify themselves, claim for themselves tazkiyah to nafs? بَلِ اللَّهُ يُزَكِّي مَنْ يَشَاءُ Rather Allah is the one who places tazkiyah on some. Allah is the one who gives a person a tazkiyah. The tazkiyah is two types that come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's tazkiyah to aynin and tazkiyah to wasfin. What does tazkiyah to aynin and tazkiyah to wasfin mean? It means Allah azza wa jalla, He chooses a person by name and He praises them by name like the Ashar al Mubashirina bil Jannah. Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, and Ali, and the other remaining Sahabans. The Prophet has stated them. Textually, we have evidence that these Sahabas are what? That these Sahabas are praiseworthy. They have a tizkiya. Abu Bakr has a tizkiya from Allah. He has a tizkiya from the Messenger. Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhum. This is called tizkiya to Ain. Individually, by name, they have a tizkiya. The second type is called tizkiya to Wasfin. A tazkiyah that come, came about based on, uh, based on description. Allah praised a people who have come with a type of description. Who are they? The mu'minun. The mu'min has a tazkiyah. From who? Allah Azza wa Jalla. Because Allah praised iman. The muttaqin. The muttaqun, the people of taqwa, Allah has praised them. This is tazkiyah to wasfin. Description is being praised. The mujahidun. The people who fight for the cause of Allah. They are praised. Because Allah wa ta'ala praised the mujahidun. وَمَا إِلَى ذلك. And the list goes on. That's called tazkiyah to wasfin. People's tazkiyah can be right or can be wrong. Ulama's tazkiyah can be right or can be wrong. Umar radiallahu anhu, he praised, and Umar, who is he? Umar, وَهُوَ الْمُحَدَّثُ الْمُلْهَمْ Umar is muhaddath al-mulham. Radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Umar, he praised Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim. Qatilu Ali, the one who killed Ali, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he had a tazkiyah from Umar radiyallahu anhu, al-muhaddath al-mulham. So this group, they go to the extreme of going to a particular shaykh. And that shaykh, they hasten, all of them, to sit in front of him, to renew their tazkiyah. Now keep in mind Umar radiallahu anhu gave this tazkiyah way before Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim did what he did. Yani he changed. Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim changed. Umar died and then Uthman. And then at the time of Ali, Abdul Rahman ibn Muljim killed Ali ibn Abi Talib. So he changed. The, the tazkiyah of a scholar can change. But if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises a person by name, that person will never change. If the tazkiyah to Aynin, Allah names a person and says, this person is min ahl jannah he's min ahl jannah and Allah praises this person, that person is praised. If Allah wa ta'ala praises a description, that description, whoever comes with it, is praiseworthy. Have a tazkiyah from Allah. The mu'min has a tazkiyah from Allah. The mutaqi has a tazkiyah from Allah. As long as he comes with this description, he has a tazkiyah. If he leaves it, the tazkiyah is no longer for him because he has left the description. So this group of people, their tazkiyah is not about what Allah wa ta'ala gave or not necessarily. It's the Shaykh. They hasten to the Shaykh. They go to him. They sit with him. They renew their tazkiyah from him. Every year they have to show their face. Shaykh, I'm still Salafi. I'm here. Shaykh says, I'm, I know you are Salafi. And that's how they are. That is extreme exaggeration. That is extreme what? Exaggeration. Now I want to go into the second group. The second group how have they fallen into al ghuluf al mashayikh Extreme negligence regarding the scholars. How have they fallen into it? 
The same that I mentioned for the first party, I'm going to mention the opposite for the other party, which is تَنَقُصِ ulama, Belittling the scholars. Giving no value to the scholars, no station or status. Who are they? They don't know our waqi'. Don't go back to them. They got dodgy fatwas. Keep their fatwas in their country. And once upon a time, they gave the fatwa that coffee was haram. And now look at it. They said it's halal. وَمَا إِلَىٰ ذَلِكَ all of that is tanaqusul ulama. It is actually just to put the scholar down. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he raised the station of the believers. The believers are better than the non-Muslims. But then within the believers, Allah raised the station of the people of knowledge. He gave them that status, that position. Allah gave it to them subhanahu wa ta'ala. يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised them, gave them that position. No one has the rights to take that away from them. وَلِذَلِكَ Imam Al-Qurtubi رَحِمَهُ اللَّهُ Abu Abdullah Al-Qurtubi in his tafsir, he said, when it came to the ayah, يَرْفَعِ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمَ دَرَجَاتِ He said, أَنَّهُ يَرْفَعُ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْعِلْمِ Allah raises the people of knowledge. عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا He raises them from the ordinary believer. The, which ones? The believers لم يؤتوا العلم who knowledge wasn't given to. The scholar who has knowledge has been picked, chosen, and he has been risen higher than the ordinary folk. The general mass, the lay Muslim, the scholars are higher than them. To treat the scholars and them the same is going against this particular verse that I mentioned. I'm going to mention a statement that is very powerful. I want you to all ponder here. A statement that Imam Al-Qazwini rahimahullah he said in his kitab Mufid Al-Ulumi. He has a chapter in that book where he said Fi huquq al-ulama when it comes to the rights of the scholars. At the beginning he said I'lam no anna darajat al-ulama the status and the position and the station of the scholars min ummati Muhammad in the ummah of Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said until he went to saying wa karamatahum and this their honor their reputation, their dignity. Azimatun is very, very big. The scholars, their daraja and their karama, their level and their honor is very high. Waluhumahum masmuma and their flesh is poisonous. Man shammaha marid. Anyone who smells it tries to even go close to the scholars and wants to say something, he wants to go close. Man shammah, anyone who smells this flesh, he will become sick. Wa man akalaha, anyone who eats the flesh of the scholars, nah, saqimah, he will be poisoned. And this way, where did he take this from? He took it from the statement of Ibn Asakir. What did Ibn Asakir say? He said, Luhubu al ulama'i masmuma, wa'adatu Allahi fi hatki astari muntaqisihi ma'luma, fa man atlaka lisanahu bil ulama'i bi thalb, abalahu Allahu qabla mawti bi mawti al qalb. The flesh of the scholars is poisonous. Wallahi, many people take different approaches to slander the scholars. Many approaches. You can try to uh, contextualize your criticism towards the scholars and make it look like an academic refutation or you can even try to make it look like a genuine concern. Whatever you call it, Allah knows the reality. The end of the day, it's a slander. It's ta'anun fi irdul ulama. You are slandering a people Allah chosen. And Imam Al-Tufi mentioned something before I finish off the explanation of Ibn Asakir's statement. At-Tufi rahimahullah, he said, the way Allah chose the prophets and the messengers, he chose the scholars. The scholars were chosen, were picked by Allah Azza wa Jalla. And he recited the ayah, Allahu a'lamu haythu yaj'alu risalat. Allah knows where he's going to place his message. Yani, after Nabi Allah Muhammad died, we're not like the previous nations. The previous nations, what would happen? If one prophet died, another prophet would come. And if that prophet died, and another prophet would come. Ummah to Muhammad, the Prophet died, there's no Prophet after this. There's no Prophet after Nabiullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, who's going to replace him? Or who, not replace him, but who is going to convey to us what he came with? The ulama, the scholars. That's why the Prophet said, Al-ulama warathatul anbiya wa inna al-anbiya ilam yuwarrithu dirhaman wala dinaran wala kinnama warathul ilma faman akhadahu akhadahu bihadin wafir. They inherited from the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the religion. 
So Ibn Asakir said, Luhumul ulama masmuma. The flesh of the scholars is poisonous. Wa'adatullahi fi hatki astari muntaqisi ma'luma. Allah's dealing with the people, the way Allah deals with the people who slander the scholars, speaks bad about them, is what? Look at what he does to them, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah destroys their heart before death comes to them. Their heart dies. They apostate. They fall back on their heels. Yani a lot of people we're seeing today who have been misguided in the da'wah scene, who are going off the track. Wallahi, many of them, if you really look at it, it's because تَنَقُّصِ ulama, Belittling the scholars. Putting them down. A people Allah chose. Ahlullah, Allah's people. The Prophet said in the hadith, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَنْ عَادَنِي وَلِيًّا فَقَدْ آدَنْتُ بِالْحَرْبِ Anyone who opens enmity to my awliya, the first people are the ulama. Or one of the first people are the ulama, the people of knowledge. They are from the awliya of Allah. You went into fight with them, then you're in a fight with Allah. وَأُوسِيكُمْ Now he's going to advise us, Al-Qazwini. He said, I advise you. مَعْشَرَ النَّاسِ people. وَالْمُلُوكِ and kings. I advise you with who? بِالْعُلَمَاء I advise you with the scholars. I advise you to take care of the scholars and look after them and be, be good towards them. He said, وَأُوسِيكُمْ مَعْشَرَ النَّاسِ People. وَالْمُلُوكِ and kings and rulers. بِالْعُلَمَاءِ خَيْرًا I advise you, urge you to take good, of, good care of these scholars. To take good care of the scholars. فَمَنْ عَظَّمَهُمْ فَقَدْ عَظَّمَ اللَّهُ Anyone who honors the scholars has honored Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَسُولَهُ And has honored Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. If you honor the ulama, you honor Allah and you honor the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, وَمَنْ أَهَانَهُمْ Anyone who puts the scholars down, فَقَدْ أَهَانَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فَقَدْ أَهَانَ اللَّهُ فَقَدْ أَهَانَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى That person has put down and tried to belittle Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah, you can never put him down, but that's what you've done. In your mind, you've belittled Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَرَسُولَهُ and his messenger. أُولَٰئِكَ he said, these people are who? وَرَثَةُ الْأَنْبِيَاءِ They are the inheritance, the inheritors, sorry, of the prophets. They are the inheritors of the prophets. وَصَفْوَةُ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ and they are the purest of the allies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shajaratun tayyiba. They are a pure, noble, rooted tree. Asluha tabitun wa faru'aha fi sama. Its foundations are deep into the ground and its branches stem out. And then he recited the ayah. Thalika fadlullahi yu'tihi man yasha. Wallahu dhul fadlil azim. Al-ayah. Intaha kalamu. The speech finishes there. This ideology of belittling the scholars, where did it start from? Who is the father? Who are the people that they've taken this from? And Imam al-Shatibi mentions in his kitab al-Itisam, he said, أَنَّ الْمُعْتَزِلِيَّ وَاصِلَ بْنَ عَطَائِن وَاصِلَ بْنَ عَطَائِن is the head of the Mu'tazila. And the Mu'tazila go back to him. وَاصِلَ بْنَ عَطَائِن by the way was the student of Hassan al-Basri. Hassan al-Basri, you rahimahullah, kicked him out of the gathering. Kicked him out of the gathering. He said, leave us. I'tazil anna. That's where the name Mu'tazila came from. He said, I'tazil anna. Boy, leave us alone. Stay away from us. So they got called Mu'tazila. So Imam al-Shatibi in his Kitab al-Itisab, a very powerful book. He said, أَنَّ الْمُعْتَزِلِيَّ وَاصِلَ بْنَ عَطَائِن وَاصِلَ بْنَ عَطَائِن said, تَكَلَّبَ يَوْمًا He spoke one day. وَعِنْدَهُ عَمْرُ بْنُ عُبَيْدٍ وَاصِلَ بْنَ عَطَائِن spoke. And his friend, his other Mu'tazili friend, Amr ibn Ubaid was with him. They spoke and they talked. So Amr ibn Ubaid said something whilst they were talking. He said, Ala tasma'una, do you not hear? Ma kalamu Hassan wa ibn Sirin. How do you guys not hear what Hassan al-Basri says and Muhammad ibn Sirin? Have you not heard what they say? Their statements that come out of their mouth. Do you not hear it? Ma kalamu al-Hassan wa ibn Sirin. عندما تسمعون إلا خرقة حيض الملقات that the statement of Hassan al-Basri and the statement of Muhammad ibn Sirin when they speak and you hear it it's like a woman who's had her menstruation and the cloth that she was using for her menstruation may Allah protect you guys from it the woman, the cloth that she throws that she doesn't want to use after that, the way she tosses it and she throws it is the speech that Hassan al-Basri and Muhammad ibn Sirin spit out of their mouths this is what the Mu'tazili is saying, 
and Amr ibn Ubaid qatalahu Allah. ولذلك as a side benefit ibn Jibreel when he commented on the statement he said wallahi their statement is kufrun billahi al-ali al-azim. He said wallahi their statement is disbelief of Allah because when they belittle these imams who were speaking dalil min al-Qur'an wa sunnah they were belittling the Qur'an and the sunnah wa hadha haqiqatuhum. That was the reality of the Mu'tazila. They only hated Hassan al-Basri and Wasim Ata uh, sorry, Hassan al-Basri and Muhammad ibn Sirin because of the nusus that they brought. It wasn't just based on their ijtihadat. Okay? So he said, ما كلام الحسن وابن سيرين عندما تسمعون إلا خرقة حيض المقاتل. He said, look what he, look what he didn't say after that. He said, وراوى شاطب is talking. He said, وراوى أن زعيم من زعماء الأهل البدعة. One of the head and the figures of the innovators. كان يريد تفضيل علم الكلام. الكلا كان يريد تفضيل علم الكلام. He wants to venerate knowledge, the philosophy. Huh? One of the innovators wanted to glorify philosophy and speak higher philosophy, philosophy, philosophy. Like we find today, يعني young individuals who glorify ilmul kalam, which scholars spoke about and condemned and وما إلى ذلك. So what did they do? He glorified ilmul kalam and he wants to glorify it over what? على الفقه. He wants to glorify ilmul kalam above ilm fiqh. أهل البدع. Shatibi is saying this. So he wants to glorify ilmul kalam over what? Fiqh, which is part of the religion. فكان يقول and so he in in order to say that he has to insult and belittle the people who represent fiqh, the imams of fiqh. So what does he say? He said he said إن علم الشافعي the knowledge of an Imam al-Shafi'i وأبي حنيفة and an Imam Abu Hanifa إمامان عظيمان two great imams of fiqh, both of those two. جملة هو their knowledge and their understanding. لا يخرج من سراويل امرأة Their knowledge is only based on the woman's waist يعني حيض That's all they know هذا كلام هؤلاء الزائغين شاطبي said this is the statement of these deviated individuals قاتلهم الله May Allah destroy them he said So you find that today The same thing is said against Sheikh Salah Al-Fawzan Sheikh Abdul Muhsin Al-Abbad Sheikh Al-Albani رحمه الله تعالى Sheikh Muhammad Ibn Salah Al-Uthaymin Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ibn Baz the same is said about Sheikh Nadir Hussein al dahlawi and all the Imams of Islam. You find them insult. And Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab is not far from that. And the criticism that is said about him, it's no different to what was said about Al Imam al Shafi'i and Muhammad ibn Siri. Always remember that. The shaitan that sent revelation on those ones is the same shaitan that's sending revelation on these ones. As Allah said in the Quran, يُوحِي بَعْضُهُمْ إِلَىٰ بَعْضٍ زُخْرُ فَالْقَوْلِ وُرُورًا وَلَوْ شَاءَ رَبُّكَ مَا فَعَلُوهُ فَذَرْهُمَ مَا يَحَذَرُونَ Insulting Muhammad ibn Abd al-Wahhab and Ibn Taymi and Ibn al-Qayyim and Ibn Kathir and Dhabi and Abd al-Rahman, Yahya al-Mu'allimi and the great Imams of al-Islam. It's nothing new. I'm belittling the scholars today by saying that they do not know our waqi' and they don't understand our reality. Wallahi, it's a stepping stone to tanaqus al-ulama. If you're sincere and you believe the scholars don't know your waqa, then you don't also know the religion. If you're sincere and you're genuine and you're saying they do not know the waqa of your situation, then take the mas'ala to them. Take the issue to them. Because you yourself don't know the deen. You don't know the abjadiyat of the religion. They may not have tasawwur of the mas'ala. It makes every sense for you to take the issue to them Allow them to perceive it and understand it, and they will give you the ruling of the Sharia. Ah. Isn't that not the solution to the matter? But because you think they don't know the waqa in this situation, and sometimes they may not know. Sometimes they may not know. But if they don't know, it makes more sense for you to take it to them and show it to them. It doesn't mean that they don't know the waqa of this situation. I know the waqa, and so that I know the religion and the ruling from the Sharia ah regarding this matter. No, it doesn't mean that. Now I'm going to go into the second um, thing that the uh, group who fall into extreme negligence regarding the scholars fall into, which is um, fully and completely dismissing the concept of teskia of the ulama. There's no importance. Why do I need to do teskia of the ulama? What importance does that hold? Why do we even need to do it? Who gave a scholar the rights to give me a tazkiyah? Wa ma ila dalik. No value does this tazkiyah hold for them. It means nothing to them. 
Everybody who wants can come forward and teach and educate and وَمَا إِلَىٰ ذَلِي And there's no value uh, or there's no importance given to who are you? Where did you come from? Where did you study? What did you study? How did you study? سَمُوا لَنَا رِجَالَكُمْ Tell us who your shuyukhs are and the people that you took from. None of that is given importance to. Rather they say to the, uh, the people um, بَلِّغُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَا Convey even one verse from me. And so you find the person بَلِّغُ عَنِّي وَلَوْ آيَا He jumps with that and then he goes and he speaks about this and he speaks about that and he talks about this and he talks about that. قَضَايَا and أُمُور Matters if it was presented to if these matters were presented to Umar لَشَاوَرَ بِهِ أَهْلَ الْبَدْرِ He would have called the people of Badr together and say what do you guys think? Brothers and sisters the tazkiyah, it comes in two ways. The first way is a tansisu min al ulama. A scholar specifically praises a person. It's one way of us knowing a particular individual. This person is being praised by the ulama, the scholars, the people of knowledge, has praised this individual. He's got a letter of tazkiyah, or he's got an audio, whatever. He's got a a nas, a direct statement of a scholar praising him. The second one is a shuhrat wal istifadah bil ilmi wa sunnah. This person became famous and prominent upon knowledge and calling to the sunnah. That's another tizkiyah. He has become famous, known for knowledge and sunnah. He's a person of the sunnah, goes to the sunnah. So he's known for his knowledge and he's known for calling to the sunnah. The second type that itself is a tazkiyah is mentioned by Khatib al-Baghdadi rahimahullah and also al-Shaykh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad in the Sharah of Sunan ibn Majah. That al-Shuhra wal-Istifada bil-Ilmi wa sunnah is a form of tazkiyah. That we will consider your legacy to speak for you. Someone we looked at, we saw him calling to the kitab and the sunnah. When he speaks, he quotes the, the Salaf al-Salih and what they said, he doesn't come with any aqwal shad, the strange opinions. He's in line with the view of the early Imams of Al-Islam. This individual, my beloved brothers and sisters, that is a tazkiyah for him. That is a tazkiyah for him. It is important that we do not fall into the extreme that the first party fell into and the extreme that the second party fell into. The first party, particular individuals, are the only ones that can give you tazkiyah. Yani another alim cannot give you tazkiyah. That one shaykh of theirs has to give you tazkiyah. And the other shuyukhs is tazkiyah. They don't care about it. There's no weight in their eyes. On top of that, the tazkiyah has to be renewed every year. You have to go back to the shaykh. He has to pardon you. He has to be pleased with you. That's one extreme. We've spoken about it. The other extreme, any individual who's eloquent in speech, who can articulate himself properly, ya he come. Can you give da'wah? Can you come to us in the park? Can you refute this person? Can you debunk this? Can you this? Can you that? Has no qualifications in the religion. What did Ibn Sirin say? He said, Inna hadha al-ilm deen. This matter is a religion. فَانْظُرُوا عَمَّنْ تَأْخُذُونَ دِينَكُمْ Look at who you take your religion from. Ibn Jabir rahimahullah, he said, لَا يُؤْخَذُ الْعِلْمُ إِلَّا مِمَّنْ شُهِدَ لَهُ بِالطَّلَبِ لَا يُؤْخَذُ الْعِلْمُ إِلَّا مِمَّنْ شُهِدَ لَهُ بِالطَّلَب do not take knowledge from a person who doesn't have witness to testify for his seeking of knowledge. There have to be people who testify, who witness to this person's knowledge and that he sought knowledge and he seek knowledge. Al Imam Malik, what did he say? He said, Laysa kullu man ahabba an yajlisa fil masjid lil tahdith wal futya jealous. Not every person who loves to come and teach in the masjid and narrate hadith and give fatwa can just go and do it. Hatta yushawira fihi. That person must consult Ahlul Salah, the people of righteousness. Wal Fadl, the people of virtue. Ahlul Jihati fil Masjidi. Amamin al Masjidi. The people who are responsible, who have the keys to choose who should be given a fatwa or not. Fa'irra'u ahlal lidarik. If they see that this person is fit, 
and he has the ala, the instrumental knowledge, he has the understanding, he has the talab, then that individual is entitled to. Al Imam Malik then wanted to say about himself, Wallahi, he said, Wa ma jalastu. I never sat down. Hatta shahid ali sab'una shaykhan min ahli al ilmi. Anni mawdi'u li dalik. 70 of the scholars of Medina, they gave me the rights, the tazkiyah, the approval that I have the rights to go and teach. So in Islam, we venerate, we glorify, we admire the concept of, the concept of tazkiyah. Brothers and sisters, if a person comes up to us right now and he says, I want to do da'wah, we say to that person who's majhul, unknown, we don't know you, we have the rights to ask you tazkiyah. Who praised you from the ulama? Who knows you? Because you're not known to us, you've not seen your da'wah, we've not seen what you call to, we don't see what you preach, you don't have shuhra wal istifadah, bil ilmi wa sunnah, we don't know you, you're unknown, anonymous person, we ask you for the tazkiyah. If we see a person who's unknown, and he is with the Ahlul Bid'ah, we've never seen anything from him, he's unknown to us, and he's only with the Ahlul Bid'ah, we have the rights to connect him to the innovators. وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet ﷺ, he said, الْمَرْءُ عَلَى دِينِ خَلِيلِهِ The person is of the religion of his friend. You are what your friend is. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, as Ibn Abi Shayban Tabarani ibn Batta narrated, اِعْتَبِرُوا النَّاسَ بِأَخْدَانِهِمْ Judge the people based on their friends. Base the people, judge them, consider them based on their friends. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud said that. If a person is unknown, he has, he's unknown to us. We don't know what his da'wah is about. He doesn't call to the sunnah. We've not seen him call to the sunnah. We've not seen him preach. That we have the rights, we have the rights to call him like we refer to him as the Ahlul Bid'ah. He's with those khawarij, he's with those individuals. He's with them for a reason. So he's part of them. These people, no. This person doesn't have no tazkir from the ulama. He also doesn't have any shuhra wal istifada. He's unknown. His da'wah is not known. He, what he calls to is unknown. This individual, for them, is min ahli sunnah. Ta'ifatul mansura. Where did you get this from? We don't know his da'wah and where he called the sunnah to. No scholar has given him tazkir. Neither of the two we have. He's anonymous to us. He's unknown to us. What should we do in a situation like that? And he's always with ahlul bid'ah. He doesn't ever want to go to Ahlul Sunnah, wherever they are. We say, اعتبروا الناس بأخدانهم We will judge that person based on his friends and his colleagues and the people he's with. Ibn Abi Shaybah narrated that in Tabarani and Ibn Battah. I will stop there, inshallah ta'ala. Anything I might have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and Shaytan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. How can you do a two-second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel. Simple. Like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users. And imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.